So we want to carry on our review of cardiovascular diseases now by considering another problem of the systemic arteries. So we've considered hypertension as a condition affecting the systemic arteries. Another common condition affecting the systemic arteries is atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis. Now in atherosclerosis there's the accumulation of atheroma inside blood vessels. Now we're considering the systemic arteries here. So these are the arteries going from the left ventricle to all tissues of the body. And atherosclerosis can affect a wide variety of these vessels. For example, it can affect the coronary vessels, the coronary arteries taking blood to the myocardium. It can uh, affect the cerebral vessels taking blood to the brain. Because all tissues need a viable supply of blood. So any tissue we have, there's going to be an arterial supply. That's going to break down into smaller branches and they're going to supply areas of tissue with blood. Of course, these are going to break down into numerous arterioles and smaller branches. But the tissue that this arterial branch is supplying blood to must supply blood to the capillary beds. This tissue, it's absolutely essential this tissue has an ongoing blood supply. This tissue cannot survive without its blood supply. It needs an adequate blood supply because it needs oxygen in the blood. It needs nutrients from the blood and it needs a flow through of blood to remove material such as the waste products of metabolism, such as carbon dioxide. So that needs to be going on all the time. Now what happens in atheroma is, if we look at a cross section of this artery here, and remember we're looking at a systemic artery, so if we relate this to our original diagram, we could be looking at an artery here for example, supplying blood into the systemic circulation. And basically that's got three layers to the arterial wall. There's an outer layer, the tunica adventitia or the tunica externa. And again, this is dealt with in more detail in other videos in this series on the cardiovascular physiology, the AMP. And there's a thicker middle layer, the tunica media. And there's a thinner internal layer, the tunica intima. Now what happens in this disease process of atherosclerosis is that fatty materials such as cholesterol gets through the tunica intima and starts accumulating just underneath the tunica intima. And again, we deal with this in more detail in other videos, but that's what happens. Then over time, what happens is you have the artery, the adventitia as normal, but Underneath the tunica intima, we develop an area of, of uh, atheroma, like this, underneath the tunica intima. That's the tunica intima there. And this will get bigger with time. And the bigger it gets, the more it's going to impose into the arterial lumen. Often occurs at the bifurcation, so it might start just a little bit where arteries bifurcate, but, but then it can get uh, more extensive. And as it gets more extensive, I think you can see now there's less space here for the blood to get through. And the thing about this process, this atheroma, is it's associated with few complications. So let's look at those. So one is uh, 
ischemia. Now ischemia is a reduced blood supply to the tissue. Another is thrombosis. That is a blood clot where there's not supposed to be one. And another is aneurysm, which is a weakness in the wall of the blood vessel. Because as the atheromatous plaque develops, you see that's all atheromatous plaque there now. That means that this, there used to be this distance here of viable arterial wall. Now there's less distance of viable arterial wall, so that's going to be weaker. And the lumen is going to be smaller because it's pressing in. So we get a weakened wall with less supply of oxygenated blood getting through. Now, the ischemia, so these are all caused by atheroma. The atherosclerosis. So the atheroma, the atherosclerosis, a complication is ischemia, a complication is thrombosis, a complication is aneurysm. And these cause a lot of conditions which we are unfortunately only too familiar with. Ischemia can lead to angina, angina pectoris. This is caused by myocardial ischemia. So when there's a reduced blood supply through this narrowed component here, in this case in the coronary arteries, so it's supplying the myocardium, not enough blood is getting through to that area of the myocardium. And this means the metabolism will change and it changes from aerobic with oxygen to anaerobic with the production of lactic acid. And we believe that's what causes the pain, the accumulation of lactic acid in the myocardium. So angina, very often angina of effort, it comes on when the patient, the pain comes on when the patient is exercising. And uh, transient transient ischemic attack TIA is caused by a reduced blood supply to the brain for a period of time giving features very similar to a cerebrovascular accident, but they resolve because they're caused by ischemia as opposed to infarction. And another one we see quite a bit of is the peripheral vascular disease, where there's reduced blood supply, particularly to the limbs. So these are all complications of ischemia very common conditions. There's others, but they're probably common ones. So the ischemia caused by the atheroma. Now, if we go back to this diagram, what can happen here is if the, there's supposed to be a roof on this atheromatous plaque here, but if that's damaged, if the roof of the plaque is damaged, then the blood can come into contact with the core of the plaque. And the core of the plaque is atherogenic. Well, it's atherogenic, there's atheroma, but the core of the plaque, is, it will promote coagulation. So if the plaque ruptures and the blood comes into contact with the core of the atheromatous plaque, then what can happen is the blood clot can start to develop. So blood clot can develop and the blood clot where there's not supposed to be one is called a thrombus. Of course there's never supposed to be a blood clot within the lumen of, a, of an artery. And if that thrombus is in the coronary arteries then that can lead to myocardial myocardial infarction 
or cerebrovascular accident if it's in the cerebral vessels. CVA or stroke, MI of course is MI, myocardial infarction, MI. Or it could occur in the mesenteric vessels affecting the gut. Resulting in an area of the gastrointestinal tract which loses its blood supply. Or it could affect the limb acute. Limb ischemia. Or actually infarction. So if the blood supply is completely blocked off, so if the clot here completely occludes an artery or an arterial branch, then this area of tissue here will die altogether. That's called an infarct. An infarction, the area of infarct that tissue will die, unless you can restore the blood supply very quickly, of course. So these are still complications of atheroma, but this other set caused by the, uh, caused by the thrombus formation. Another set of complications there. Now aneurysm is a weakness in the wall of the blood vessel. And uh, that can affect the aorta, for example. So we can get, uh, it affects the abdominal aorta, that causes abdominal. Aortic. Abdominal aortic aneurysm, known as a triple A. Now, if that happens, Going back to this diagram, the wall of the vessel basically ruptures and that means we get a complete communication between the blood in there and the outside world. And we can get massive hemorrhage into the abdominal cavity. Or if it's in the thoracic cavity, it can be a thoracic aortic aneurysm. The ones we tend to see most in hospital are the, uh, the abdominal aortic aneurysms. Now we can send these to the uh, vascular surgeons if we catch them early enough, but by the time we rupture the patient's prognosis is poor because of the torrential blood loss. An aneurysm can also cause a cerebral hemorrhage. Stroke, causing stroke. Of course, if you're watching in the States, you don't have an A. In the UK, we have an A for hemorrhage. So we can see that uh, aneurysm, weakness in the wall of the blood vessel, is also a complication of atheroma, but can cause another set of pathologies. So that's just looking at two conditions affecting the systemic arteries. We've looked at hypertension and we've also looked at the complications of uh, atheroma. There's an old saying in, in uh, medical nursing circles that you're as fit as your arteries. And to some extent that's true because if you've got good arteries, you're getting good blood supply to the tissues of the body. If you've got healthy systemic arteries, and you won't get this list of very common conditions that we've just, um, just considered. So we need to learn how to advise people on preventing atherosclerosis and managing it early if we are aware of its presence. So that was uh, systemic arteries. Next, I think we'll look at, um, if we're working round, I think next we'll look at systemic veins next. So we've looked at pulmonary arteries, we've looked at systemic arteries, 
and in the next video clip we'll consider disorders of systemic veins. The systemic veins being the dra veins draining the systems of the body back to the right atrium.